Hello and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. Today we're talking about how to work with virtual assistants for your Amazon business. And for that, I have with me Steven Selikoff from Product Development Academy. Hi, Steven. How's it going? Hello. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good. Thanks, Steven. And um, yeah, Margaret is here. We're still waiting for Kevin to join us. He's got some technical issues, but he will be joining us shortly. So it's going to be a fun episode. And this is a topic that um, I think a lot of people have been talking about in various groups. And uh, there has been an increase in the number of VAs that we are seeing in various Facebook groups, posting comments and giving suggestions. So we just thought of, you know, talking about um, best practices when you're working with a VA. And uh, we're, we're not going to be talking about SOPs. I mean, we don't run an agency as such and we don't offer VA services. But this is just from our experience and you know, Stephen's experience, Margaret's experience. So we're just sharing our thoughts and ideas and, and um, best practices that you might want to consider. All right. So before we get into that, um, Stephen, do you want to give an introduction and just quickly tell people about yourself, your experience and what exactly is it that you do? Sure, sure. First of all, I'm like absolutely thrilled to be joining you guys tonight. This is a lot of fun. And um, for people who celebrate, hopefully I say it the right way. Happy Diwali. Yes. <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, so I've been. I've been sourcing, well, I've been selling to retailers now for 19 years, almost 20 years, started in 2001. And um, I was selling on Amazon, started in 2005. Uh, in 2006, started selling with FBA, which is where's their fulfillment. They announced it in September. I joined in October. You couldn't keep me away. <laughs> um, and um, uh, started negotiating and working with China. Actually, I was, I was taught how to do it when I was with Microsoft and um, uh, where I ran global um, worldwide retail um, uh, retail marketing, worldwide, <laughs> global worldwide retail and marketing for Microsoft. And um, of course, I started doing it for myself as well. So I put those skills to work and I've been doing that now for 15 years. Uh, I love sourcing. I love working with China. I love working with factories. I love developing products. And uh, now I get to teach and share that as well. So I do that with Product Development Academy. And um, recently, uh, Megal and I were in a thread talking about VAs. And uh, we <laughs> continued talking about it afterwards. And she says, well, you want to come on and let's chat about it? And I said, absolutely, let's do that. Here I am. Yes, absolutely. And uh, okay, so let's get into it. I think, um, you know, Kevin will join us in a few minutes. Probably he's still fixing his um, microphone issues, but let's get started here while we wait for him. So, um, you know, Stephen, why a VA? Why do we need a VA? My, my old partner uh, constantly told me, Stephen, you, you have to delegate things off. You can't do it all yourself. And, um, like a typical stubborn guy, I'm thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. But then a year ago, I had a heart attack. <laughs> so nothing more serious than that. Um, I realized I have to delegate things. And uh, with her advice and friends' advice and other people's advice. Um, and that really is what it comes down to. You don't have to have a heart attack. Please don't have one. <laughs> I've had enough, everybody. Um, Take things off your plate. Focus on those things that you are best at. Focus at those things you like to do. Are there things that you don't like to do, that you avoid doing because you don't like doing? Um, put all of your energy into where you are going to give the best effort for your business and delegate those other things out. And, and when I say that, it doesn't always have to be a VA. You can delegate out your graphics work to a graphics artist. You know, you can dele delegate out uh, copywriting to a copywriter. And of course, you can delegate out all sorts of other work, which we'll be talking about today, to a VA. Very good. So what tasks would not you give a VA, Stephen? So are there certain things that you think no VA should be doing, you should do it yourself? Yeah, and I think I'm, I'm probably in the minority here. Um, <laughs> I feel very, very strongly that identifying your product, 
needs to come from yourself. Uh, if you are, uh, well, I've got my little pug here. He's sound asleep. He's 16 and a half years old. Uh, if I were to have somebody source um, collars for dogs or um, uh, accessories for pugs, they might come up with a thin little collar, not knowing that pugs need a harness. Now, that's, ex that's knowledge I have because it's something that I live with every single day. I love my little guy. He's a sweet pug. I don't want to injure him by putting on a collar that's not right for pugs. And because I'm intimately aware of it, I can do that. If, if someone does needlepoint, if someone likes baking, if someone likes woodwork, if someone likes cleaning their house, if somebody has kids, these are the things that you know the most about. Don't outsource that opportunity to use your skills and what makes you special because that's what's going to make your product choice special. It's gonna make you already an expert, use it. Yeah, there's lots of things you can outsource. That's the only thing I say 100%, keep it to yourself. You, there are times, we all know this, there are times when you hate your product, where you just say, I can't believe this stupid thing. Why are people buying it? We're gonna throw it out the window. It was terrible to begin with because you get frustrated. How do you come back to loving that product? if you didn't choose it in the first place. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, I think too um, you sort of, you, you, I know you don't fall in love with your product, but you've got a bit more of a connection to it. And, I mean, if you get somebody to choose a product for you, I'd be always thinking, have they done that research? I would want to go back myself and double check that. So I might as well draw it from step one as waste a lot of money and a lot of time um, and then have to redo it myself because I just don't think anyone should be making that decision for you because, you know, we could be talking hundreds of thousands of dollars over, you know, 12 months if, depending, at, you know, on where this product goes. So to me it's your money and I think it's something you should be taking a bit more responsibility for. Kevin, yeah. Kevin is your microphone working? Do you want to unmute yourself and test it? Can you hear me now? We can. Oh, clear. <laughs> <Yay>. ah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, sorry, guys. I've been I've been um, sort of messing around with the uh, audio. It wouldn't work, so I was I was stressing whether I could. Uh, yeah. So hello, Ma uh, Ma uh, Margaret, Magla, and Stephen. Pleased to meet you. Because <laughs> I couldn't speak before. <laughs> yeah, so we were just talking about what tasks not to give to VA. So product research is definitely one, and I totally agree with that because you're trying to build a brand, right? You're you're not just selling products on Amazon. You ultimately want to build a brand and have a series of products, and you want to be able to position your brand in a certain way. Uh, you know, maybe you want to source high end products and premium products and fo focus on the higher end market or you, maybe you want to do more of the, you know, uh, gift items or Christmassy products. Only you know what, how you want your brand to be positioned. And I feel that's also one reason why it's so important to make sure that, you know, you are comfortable with all of the products that uh, you're choosing. So, mm. um, yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess that's part of being the boss. That's part of being... Yeah the boss is you know you sort of make the overall you know I, I, I sort of make those sort of decisions for me i want to make those this unless they could, i had a particular idea and they could bring the numbers to me and the numbers all matched up that's sort of different but for someone to sort of make my mind up for me and choosing a say a winning product i don't think that's ever going to happen <laughs> Exactly. Also, how much to invest? You know, uh, we've seen some yeah. in some groups, some of the VAs have said, hey, you need at least X amount of money to uh, to launch a product. Well, that's for you to decide. And it's not really, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's there's nothing set in stone that you need X amount of uh, you know dollars to launch a product. You can do it with a thousand dollars. You can do it with twenty thousand dollars. So there's just so many different ways to launch products. And uh, I don't think there's any set rule. That says, right? What, what do you I, this, this was, let's see if I can find one here. My very first million dollar plus product or product line was um, pillowcases. And they did pretty well. There's a catalog from them. Yeah. Here's one of the pillowcases. And uh, I launched this with about $400. Uh. And just reinvested and reinvested, and obviously it worked well. 
Absolutely. And it's because it was a good product. Product. Of choice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and no surprise, it has to do with dogs. So I get to point down to my little puppy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Uh, yeah, now this is not uh, standard. I don't want people to think, oh, wow, I can start with $400. No, it's going to be very, very painful if you do that. Mm -hmm. But um, we can break it down point by point. If you're doing something that's made of plastic that needs a change in a mold, you're going to have to invest in a mold, and depending on the size and where it's done it's going to be more and more money. If you're investing in something that has a, a, a large MOQ, that's going to cost money. But if you're investing in something that's soft goods, like a pillowcase, soft goods, piecemeal work, um, work that's done by hand, sewn, and so on, you're looking, your investment is going to be probably an entire roll of cloth. And that's it. You can do that for much less. You don't have to worry about recouping the cost of the downtime and the equipment it takes to put a new mold in. If you're doing something with bent metal, you're going to have to do molds for that as well. That's uh, an investment that you need to get back. But something, if you do um, hats, if you do sweaters or apparel is a good one, uh, you have a, a good tech pack. Someone can do 200 of those. Um, ease, here we go. We were just kidding about it before. Face mask. <laughs> you could get a customized face mask that says um, sleep through COVID and, and, and do 100 of these. Not a problem. <laughs> what it comes down to is choosing the right product. And if your product, in fact, frankly, the more unique your product is, the less you're going to have to be paying for PPC. So to me, um, does it take $20,000, $25,000? Yes. If you have an expensive product, and if it's saturated, and if you have to uh, be able to compete with that money, and if you have something that's a less expensive product, that's not as saturated, then you can spend a lot, lot less and still launch and be successful. By the way, that one I showed you earlier, this was the first of my products ever to get on the Today Show in the United States. Not bad for something that started with $400. So now so, everyone, please don't go out and start doing pillowcases just like Steve's because he's probably well, done this quite a few years ago when it was a lot easier well, <laughs> to make a million is, dollars. I'll tell you right now, <laughs> these days you could do these with print on demand. So yeah. I wouldn't even advise doing these right now. But this was 2012, I think. I don't know. Yeah. I'm old. A lot of, a lot of water's gone <laughs> under the bridge since then in the yeah, Amazon and, world. <laughs> and a lot of hair off of the head. <laughs> yeah, I've seen your so, photos from 10 years ago, Stephen, those were amazing. So, Stephen, what, what tasks do you think are, are really suitable to outsource to a VA? To you me, know, typical. To me, uh, I, I put those into two, two uh, uh, buckets. One is anything that is objective. So anything that has to do with numbers, anything that has to do with um, responding to a certain number of emails, anything that is measurable, uh, very easy, easily measurable uh, like those, absolutely. Particularly, not every VA has the same skill set. Mm -hmm. So you might have somebody who has a great ability to respond to business emails. I hate writing business emails. Um, I've got a lovely VA from Australia um, to write my business e emails. That's great. Now, I saw a post tonight from a VA just before we joined um, who was referring to product research as a product hunt, which is, you know, that's a day trading term, um, and was talking about factory contracts as a treaty. Well, that's an international diplomacy term. Um, <laughs> You don't want them writing your business emails, but they might have great skills yeah. at doing analytical work, at working with research tools. Um, so uh, the question comes back to what would you, uh, what would I outsource? I would outsource things that I don't like to do, like we said at the beginning, that's one bucket, but I would make sure to keep a second bucket within that first one so that I'm staying to the skills that they have best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And possibly, I suppose, things like um, customer inquiries, um, you know, returns or, um, you know, refunds, anything that you've got to deal with 
on a day-to-day basis, especially if you've got a huge turnover. I mean, you don't want to be sitting there going through looking for, you know, 30 questions you've got to answer each day in your position. I mean, it's really, oh, gosh. you know, not not uh, not ideal. But it depends on the volume, I think, of the seller as well, obviously, to how far you, you take all that. So, yeah, Mark, yeah. yeah, so what we're saying here, guys, is all the, all the, uh, all the menial tasks that I do. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, are you available as a VA, Kevin? We can talk afterwards. <laughs> no, no problem, Steve. <laughs> yeah. there, there are now to be absolutely you know, straightforward. There are VA VAs out there that are brilliant at PPC. Um, don't don't think that just because someone's a VA does not mean they have don't have skills. They can have great skills, mm. um, but um, you want to. Test those skills first. You want to analyze it. If you don't have the skills to to test them and make sure they know what they're doing, find someone who does and have them interview them. Mm -hmm. Just because they're listing themselves and saying, hey, I'm a VA, doesn't mean that they have the skills. But if they have the skills, feel free to use them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Take those things off your plate so that you don't have a heart attack like me. That's going to be my new motto. (laughs) I think what's really important is that you focus on, you know, the strategic thinking and, you know, plan your business and, you know, make sure that you have your strategies in place and then delegate tasks, uh, you know, specific tasks to VAs or other, you know, employees if you have full-time employees. But all of the strategic decisions need to be made by you. I think that's something that's very important. And another can, thing can I give I you, really can I give a, a, a great sure. actionable hint you can do yeah. when you do that? All right, so the first time that you outsource some tasks to a VA or, or to a, an employee, as Megla said, um, have them monitor themselves, have them monitor everything they are doing to accomplish the task and have them record all of that, writing down this instructions step by step by step so that they're literally writing out how to do the job for themselves. But then... The next time you have to train someone to do the same job, you now have that work documented. And now you can share that with the next person. It's the instructions are already written down. That's their very first job. Yeah, that's a great tip. I think another thing that can be outsourced is social media. You know, if you do have uh, Instagram or other you know, Facebook group for your brands, for example, uh, you can always train your VA to create um you know, graphics and banners and short videos, posts using a tool like Canva. You know, they don't have to be really good at design as such to use Canva. I mean, Canva has so many templates and it's just so easy to use. So it is very easy to train a VA to use Canva and design your posts. And I have done that. So I do have a VA that manages all of my social media posts. And, um, you know, she's not, she doesn't have a design background as such, but uh, we've been able to work together and now she's doing pretty well. So I think that's something else to consider. What else can we outsource to VAs? Listings? Like creating Yeah, I listings? think, you know, copy copywriting of your listing. I think if, but once again, you've got to get the right VA. I mean, if they don't speak um, really concise English, if you're in the US market, I think that can be a problem because it might sound quite right. How do they say, oh, what's the word for that? So i got two languages now i sort of have my american little bit and my australian bit so um you know so i mean and i think it would be very hard um you know to use someone from china or japan or something to write your copy when you're you're going for the u.s market so you've got to pick your point at that sort of person i think as well because it might not be to your advantage if it's not done right kevin you're muted you're muted yeah there are people in the Amazon space, though, that can do the sort of local, um, you know, listings for you mm. uh, for that local market. Yeah. Um, even, even the UK is, um, you know, there's different terms than Australia <laughs> and the US for different um, products. And if you use don't use the local uh, description of that uh, uh, product, then it's totally lost in space. I remember we had a conversation with Tim Jordan in India, in Delhi, and we had everybody was 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 lying on the floor laughing about the different products 
and the names of the different products and what he calls the product and what we call the product <laughs> and what the Australians call the product and England called and it was just everyone was just did we have so much fun that night just yeah, going through all the products? Yeah, it's just it's amazing, amazing what what uh, the different terms of products they have in each country. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's also important to know when to use a VA and when to use a, an agency, right? Because you could also go to a source uh, to a copywriting agency, for example, mm. and ask them to do your copy because it's a one-time task, right? So you don't necessarily need to hire a full-time VA for that. But if you have a lot of listings that you do, so maybe you could hire a full-time VA to um, publish all of your listings. But the copy is actually written by an agency. That's something else to consider. So. And if somebody doesn't speak uh, the native language, if it's you know for America, if they don't speak American-type English, they might also they might be able to read American English very very well. So there's another thing that you can. Mm -hmm. um, delegate out, whether it's customer uh, responses, recognizing if customers are, are angry, what's basic customer service, as long as they don't need, you know, you can templatize letters and emails that go back out. And that's a, a, a nice um, thing to hand off to them. And then if you trust your VA, um, you can even, you know, have a certain uh, emails that come through can be forwarded right on to them and they can read through those emails and decide it's something that you need to follow up with or not. And in some cases, even respond to them um, if, if they have that skills. So not being able to have excellent written skills, um, maybe they have excellent reading skills. And Steve, at what stage do you think, um, you know, people should, you know, start looking to outsource? I mean, if you've only got, say, two products and you're just starting out, do you still think that they should look at outsourcing some of that if they're working full time? Or do you think that you've really got to be running for, you know, 12 months and, and you know, have a, I don't know, a turnover of, you know, $10,000 or $5,000 a month to, number one, be able to pay for it, but number two, to justify it? Because, you know, it's very difficult sort of, for people who are transitioning from full-time work into Amazon to fit everything in in a day and come home from work at 10 o'clock at night and you're still writing a listing or something. Is your Amazon job detrimental to you, to your own, to your other job if you're working a full-time job, to your family life? Um, if, if, if that's happening, then absolutely outsource. I don't care what stage you're at. If you are finding that doing Amazon is hurting you, outsource it. Find something, find those things that you, you don't want. On the other hand, as you said, somebody who's just starting out. And when you're just starting out, you want to learn as mm -hmm. much as possible. You know, it's like um, <laughs> the analogy we like to use is uh, you can ride around in the back of an Uber all the time, but if the person in the front suddenly dies, you want to be able to jump in and take over the wheel. Now where the brake is. Yeah, learn how to drive the darn car. And then let someone else drive it for you. Yeah. Okay. You can experience that in India, actually. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just in Delhi. <laughs> My biggest two fears of visiting India: number one is somebody is going to get me drunk and convince me to get on top of a train. <laughs> <laughs> And number two, somebody's going to get me really drunk and convince me to cross the street. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's quite, we did that. That's quite hard. You have to wait a while. Yeah. yeah. It's not like Vietnam where they stop for you. They don't stop in India like they do in Vietnam. So you've got to remember which country you're in. You don't just walk. <laughs> or, or, so yeah. drive, you don't drive around you, do they, Mo? No. I think what I'll do is I'll delegate crossing the street. Yeah. But it sounds yeah. sounds fun. We should we should go to Agra on the train, Megla. Yeah, I think. That's well, you want to go on the roof? Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry. That's Steve. a bit crazy. Uh, yeah. We'll have buses to to take you around Delhi. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm on, on the inside. Right? On the inside, definitely on the <laughs> inside, David. Definitely on the inside. Yeah. In the lap of luxury. What are those little things they're called? Tuk they're not tuk tuks. What are they called? Autos. Autos. Okay. We went out. We were very brave, and we all went out in those one day. That was an experience. <laughs> it, you need nerves of steel to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
and Tim also actually drove a rickshaw, right? Do you remember in Agra we had the oh rickshaws, yeah, that's right, the yeah. Rickshaws. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a couple of questions here. So Manu is asking, uh, how different is it hiring a VA in the Philippines and India? And there are also a lot of VAs in Pakistan nowadays, uh, or they are from Pakistan. So yeah, I've seen, yeah. I've seen ones. Yeah. yeah. How many VAs do you think are in Pakistan? I, I know what the number is, or at least I know what I believe you, the answer is. You do? I, I don't know. Thousands, I would imagine, Stu. Thousands. 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 Of thousands. Mm. What, what do you think? Close to a million. Oh. Wow. No so surprise. Pakistan obviously is a country where you know people are trying to 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 be able to feed themselves and come up with jobs and the internet being a brilliant thing allows people to work remotely so that those people who have been able to get trained in the skills can definitely provide um, uh, services you know just like any other philippines or uh, or india or pakistan you're really not hiring the country you're hiring the person you're hiring what their skills are uh, i know people from pakistan that are absolute geniuses at doing PPC. And you wouldn't just think that, but they're geniuses because they are that smart and they are that skilled, yeah. not because they're from one country or another. I know someone who is probably the best uh, a sourcing, brilliant woman, sourcing agent I've ever met in China, now happens to live in uh, New Zealand. You know, And um, so where somebody is located, that's not the determining factor of their skills. I think if I can answer Mano's question, though, um, it should not be different. It should be that you know what the skills are that you're hiring someone for, that you interview them, you test them on those skills, and you make sure that, that they satisfy what it is that you are paying them to do. Um, if they don't, if they can't, then you know, look for another VA, but not because one's located in India or, or in Philippines, unless it's important to you that they're in your same time zone. Then hire someone in the same time zone, but not for their not for their abilities. Yeah. The country does not pack their abilities. Totally agree with you there, Stephen. We um, we've got um, a guy in Pakistan who's uh, built a couple of websites for us. Speaks excellent English. Excellent English. Um, it's done a lot of graphics over the years for us for different ventures we've been involved in and always it, you know it's a, um, for time wise price wise excellent so well if someone is looking for a VA in uh, in Pakistan let me know I'll direct them to the Facebook group the yep. there's a couple of them one Facebook group of Pakistani VAs is 251,000 people oh. <laughs> and the other and the other is more Wow. 341, I think, the last time I checked. So there are a lot of VAs eager to work. At least some of them have had to have good skills. And a few yeah. of them probably are absolute geniuses like the ones I've been lucky to deal with. Right. Yeah, and um, they don't only focus on Amazon, right? I mean, it's all sorts of digital marketing that they do. Correct? There is, um, uh, across the board, um, you'll find whether someone's in Bangladesh, whether someone's in Philippines, whether someone's in Japan, whether someone's in Chile. Um, oftentimes, if they have the aptitude to be able to do Amazon, they've already tested out that aptitude or they've already expanded their skills into other types of, of digital marketing. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So let's take this, sorry, Mark, before you go, go on. on the next yeah, question. No, let's go just on. take this yeah. question from Mano. So are VAs always genuine with their told qualifications, experience, <laughs> and <skills>? <laughs> <laughs> They are. They are about as genuine as a 22-year-old man in a bar at closing time. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't say single or not because you know he's going to lie about that. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I think that's the same as everyone who goes through a job interview, really. I mean, whether it be a VA, I mean, people always tend to exaggerate, you know, can you do that? Of course I can. And you might have to go home and Google yeah. it, but you'll be uh, know how to do it while you get through uh, the job. But, but <laughs> the answer to that one is time always tells the truth, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, and time tells the truth. And make sure that you do, that you have very clear questions. Watch three, four, five videos about what it is you're hiring for. 
So at least you can pick up on those details, write out questions that you know the answers to, but that typically someone wouldn't unless they're experienced. And then ask those questions because yes, you absolutely want to vet anyone that you're hiring, whether it's a VA, whether it's a, an employee, the worst hire I ever made years ago, I was working for a publishing company and um, I came in one morning and the cops were all there. My latest hire, which was just to run the mailroom, had brought all his friends in and stole every computer out of the place. Mm. It's like, uh, I couldn't have predicted that, but I could have vetted him more. So that's your responsibility. It's your business. Well, that's good. You, you yeah. need to, to check that on that. Yeah. Right. And so do you have any tips or advice on how to test a VA skills or how to verify the information that they are giving us? Verification is difficult. Um, of course, ask for references, but the reality is that um, if they're looking to fool you, they'll, they'll fool you with references. That's, that's terrible, but that's the truth. Um, but don't just go off of your gut. Never go off of your gut. Um, hiring should be more than a gut feeling. Uh, make a list of the qualifications that you're looking for and then research those out. If you're looking for someone to do something that you cannot do at all, then like I said before, watch some YouTube videos and get some questions that have very specific answers and ask them those. And then if that still doesn't work for you, ask someone else. Say, hey, I've got of a friend who's an expert on PPC, I'm not. I'm gonna have you talk to my friend so that they can interview you and I can decide to hire you or not. And that's perfectly okay. And frankly, a good VA is going to want you to do that because guess what? A good VA is going to ask for more money. So they want to show that they are worth it. They don't want a bad VA making all VAs look bad. They want to be respected. They, they want to work hard. And when they do work hard um, and they do know what they're doing, they deserve to be respected. So they absolutely won't have a problem with you saying, yeah, let me have a, a friend of mine talk to you. And I mean, I think, well, my belief is um, that when you're sort of, I suppose, putting a VA into the position, you need to know most of what they're going to be doing. I mean, to me, it's no good opening your Amazon account and going, oh, VA, can you can you run with this for me? I mean, I think you need to have gone through the steps of, you know, sourcing, purchasing, um, you know, all these shipping plans. I mean, if you pay someone to do it all, you're not going to know if they're making mistakes. Um, to me, you're just opening yourself to you know, total disaster. But, you know, what's your thoughts? Do you think that that's possible to do if people want to do that or not? No, I agree with you 100%. I think the more you know, the better. Um, I, I, I'm a realist, as I said. I know that there are some things where people just don't have the ability to learn or don't have the time to learn. Mm. You know, suddenly they've got product in and it's fourth quarter and they've got to start, you know, doing some 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 selected advertising, some PPC, and they don't know the skills yet, hire a VA, but make sure that that VA is properly vetted by somebody who does know PPC. Um, so in those cases, yes, but in general, I, I agree with you 100%, absolutely. Try to learn it yourself first, because you don't know if they're doing a good job or a bad job. No. And the reality is not, you can't just stick a product up online and have it sell. Lots of cases, it's not going to, or they'll be running to a, you'll run into a problem and you have to be able to address it. And you want to know that the person you've hired to do that is doing their job well. Mm. Because otherwise, if your product does become a challenge or if it fails, you could be sitting there either kicking yourself and figuring out how to do it better next time or banging your head in the corner saying, it's all Peter's fault. I should never have hired him. <laughs> yeah and yeah, you won't well, know which one yeah. to do no yeah, exactly yeah yeah because you don't know if that product's failed because it wasn't handled correctly i mean you know the cop copy mightn't be right the keywords mightn't be right you know if they select the product for you who knows you you just totally at a loss it might have been quite a success if you'd have done it yourself you, do, you there's no knowing that unless you start yourself and maybe get someone to help you once you're i think 
you need to run through a product, I think, that learning curve. So, if, Peter, so if, your, if your VA, Peter, came to you and said, hey, I watched some videos online and, and a garlic press is a really good seller. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do a thing in China and, uh, and the students challenge me. They like to challenge me and have me go around the booths and just negotiate with people in the booth over whatever it is. And uh, last October, um, I actually negotiated the best price I could for our garlic press. So, <laughs> had to do it. <laughs> oh, gosh, that's amazing. We, we, uh, Mark and myself, we love negotiating. We sort of, uh, um, we get in there and we love this. That, that's at the moment we, we're sort of missing the actual uh, physical interaction of a trade fair because it can be quite stimulating. Um, and and I I I I find uh, negotiating because I've always had a inner um, salesman inside me hidden away, <laughs> and I love to sort of you know go and sort of not not crush the people, but just negotiate. And I've always learned from an early age, you know, if you negotiate and you still got a smile on your face, that's when you can win. And if the other person still hasn't got a smile on his face, well, look out. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but we've had some fun sort of negotiating over the years with different things, my grandma. But, you yeah. know, I've heard people, I've heard some people go, oh, yeah, I crushed him for an extra dollar on a, on a, a product, you know, a physical product. And you think, why? Why? You know, it, so, somewhere you're going to lose a little bit of um, quality maybe. Or even in some cases, you lose a bit of respect because you, you know, you crush that person for a dollar. You know, I always believe it's all always fair in love and war. Would you not say, Stephen? You know, you sort of got to give a little bit to get a little bit sometimes. Well, I'll, 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 I'll use your comment right there. If you can leave with a smile on your face, that's great. But if you can leave with both parties smiling, that's even better. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's go to the next question. So how do you think, uh, you know, an e-commerce business can sustain the services of a VA without giving away too much profit? If the VA is doing a good job, then they should be worth what they're being paid for. Um, we had a, back at Microsoft, there was always kind of a, a conflict between the salespeople who would say, hey, you know, we're, we're bringing money into the company and the engineers who are saying, we're creating something for you to sell. If it wasn't for us, you wouldn't be selling anything and bringing money into the company. Your VA is going to fall into one of those two camps. They're either directly um, responsible for money coming in because they're helping the listing um, uh, or they are like the engineers helping you keep everything going on the back end that allows you to bring in money into your business and if they're not doing either effectively then you're not making enough money to sustain them if they're doing them effectively then you're making more money and you are able to sustain them okay, yeah. okay. so um well i sort of uh, well, I'm sort of thinking myself, if I had to choose a VA, um, I think I would only be doing small sections, like maybe one thing to test them on, not give them like five different tasks to start off with, maybe just choose one thing and see how they perform. Is that what you would do? And then how do you actually work out if they're overcharging you in hours? Like, you know, if you say to someone, can you write this copy for me and they come back and say, oh, it's taken me 50 hours or 100 hours. Like, would you set them a, I suppose, a task and say you've only got 10 hours to do this or do you give them a bit more of a blanket, just do it, I want it right? Well, I think any time you're starting out like that, you want to have a sense of how long that should be. Um, we're lucky. All of us are in these Facebook groups. We know people. We know people in common. We have friends. Um, once again, use those. So if you're going to have, somebody's going to be writing copy for you, um, ask some friends who are copywriters or use uh, VAs to write copy and say, how many hours should this take? And then find out if your VA is, is doing it within that expected range or not. Don't, part of the difficulty of hiring a VA 
is giving away that control. So take the plunge, give away the control, give away the ego, hire the VA, and when you give away the ego, ask for help on your questions about the VA. Don't feel that you have to know everything and you wouldn't hire a VA in the first place. Don't feel that you can't ask for help because then your VA may not be effective. They may take 50 hours for something that should take two hours, um, mm. or they may take two hours for something that should be 50, hour, 50 hours, and you have no idea that you have a superstar in your state. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's one way or the other, yeah. 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 Well, the one thing that I do not, I do not expect my VA to do, and I don't think anyone should, is your VA is not there to train you. Yeah. If you haven't done Amazon before, get a course, get a coach who will walk you through it. Yeah. Vet that coach, sign an NDA if you have to, so you can find their products, look up their products on, on Jungle Scout or Helium 10. Uh, you want to make sure you've got a good coach, uh, but someone who's done it before and learn from them. Um, a lot of VAs come from countries where they can't even list and sell on Amazon or they've just taken courses and they're hoping to learn from you. Mm. Yeah. So if you learn those skills, you're doing a better benefit to them because you're helping them become better. Mm. But if you don't know the skills, don't look for them to train you. That's, mm. that's putting too much on them and it's giving away too much of your own ownership of your business as far as getting results. So guys, I if think... you have any questions, sorry, uh, Kevin, let me just say this. If you have any yeah, questions sure, for um, Stephen or Mark, Kevin, or, you know, if you have any questions about VAs, post them in the comments and we'll address those questions. Go ahead, mm. Kevin. Yeah, I, I think um, just to sort of go back on your question there, I think with, with um, sort of um, the, the, the VAs to get them to do, so, um, as far as my, myself and Margaret goes, um, we do a lot of tasks that we sort of share. Now, there's menial tasks that um, sort of take over our lives because Am Amazon can sort of suck you in and, um, you know, and it's sort of a lot of repetitive type sort of scenarios. And like I suppose like any any business that you're involved in, whether it be a butcher, baker, candlestick maker, there's, you know, me, me, you know those sort of tasks that are, you know, sort of... Um, you know, where we have apprentices and we have trainees, you know, in any any normal business, you know, and you have, uh, you know, kids, you know, young kids to come in like sort of McDonald's and they learn the process and, you know, of that sort of business. And it, to me, it's no different with a VA. And I wouldn't um, treat it any sort of different than a normal sort of business if you a bit had a business before or even been in a, in a military situation. You know, you've got a sergeant, you've got the corporal, and then you've got, the men now without the um, not the sergeants and the sergeant major the military wouldn't sort of exist you know the officers just tell them what to do so it's horses for courses along the the line of you know and even in the you know you've worked in the corporate world Stephen you know the corporate you know Jeff Bezos would be sitting in his golden chair telling everybody what to do I don't think Jeff would do too much himself um, because he's got you know lots of uh, VAs running around for him so you know. It's horses to courses, I, I guess. Absolutely. And, and, you know, you can use Jeff Bezos as a great example for yeah. for what to look for when you hire a VA. Um, I've, I've been lucky enough to be recruited there a couple of times. I have someplace around here. I have some swag. Oh, here we go. This is one of the <laughs> things. He's got some little hidden treasures here. <laughs> like, this, is, this is what they give. This is what, at least this is what they gave you a couple of years ago when they were recruiting you. It's a little water bottle that says Amazon on it. Lots of fun. I'm sure I could sell this on eBay. Um, <laughs> but they have, um, they have their principles, and you need to, to understand the Amazon principles when you come in. Um, but they... Their hiring is based on just a handful of things. One is how well you apply those, those principles. And another one is, can you raise the bar for the entire organization? So they want someone that's going to take the business here and so bring next it up. Level. Yeah, next and if level. you can have a VA that takes your business here yep. and brings it up, just like Jeff Bezos' hiring directives, then I think you're making good decisions. With yeah, yeah. 
Let's take this question from Mano. So what kind of bonus can you pay to your VA? Should it be when they help you get good margins or during festive seasons? Yeah, that's a great question. What advice hmm. do you guys have? Steve, uh, you my think? case, I think bonuses get tied directly to performance. And you do it, you know, you exceed at performance, you immediately get a bonus. And now this is going to be absolutely terrible. But if Stephen Black is watching this, he'll recognize it immediately. It's BF Skinner at work. Um, someone does something good, you reward them. Somebody does something bad, you recognize it and address it right then. Um, I think that good margins, Q4, oh, it did really well. There's profit sharing and everything else. Uh, yeah, that's nice. But if you're going to help your VA do better, then you BF Skinner, you want to train them. You reward them when they do good. Now, other people manage differently. So I, I'd love to hear, uh, Mark, Megla, Kevin, how do you, how would you reward? Uh, well, all the same thing. We, we, you know, we, all the businesses we've ever been involved in, uh, we, we always worked on a performance, you know, how the performance mm -hmm. Um, you know, we unless you can measure it, how, how can you give it? So we, we always had tools in place that we could measure performance and pay performance by the measurement that we had in place. And so um, we did that for many years, Margaret, didn't we, in different Yeah, businesses. well, I mean, you know, we actually had people who were, I suppose, paid a base salary and then their performance, if they achieved the performances that we'd set, I mean, they could virtually double their normal what they were originally on as a weekly wage if they worked hard enough and, you know, weren't clock watchers. If they had to stay back a half an hour, they didn't get overtime anymore if they were on the bonus system. We found that worked fantastic for us um, because the work productivity was phenomenal in doing that compared to having people who were just on that same wage week in week out they had no incentive to oh it's friday afternoon we'll just slacken off but the other guys who were on the bonus system would be going if you've got another job for me and it's called to four and you're going home at 4 30 friday afternoon yeah because that changed their mentality they wanted to earn more money and they had that opportunity and i think if you applied something in that sort of scenario but it's obviously we had the software tools that actually did it in our industry it was we, we were actually one of the test sites for that but i don't know it'd be a little bit harder with amazon to do what we were doing but you know there'd be obviously you'd need to put a bit of thought into it but there'd probably be a scheme you could do with a va some sort of um you know system that you could work out depending what task they're doing once again yeah. because so, you know it's it's like um, if you've got a um, you know like our, our, our dog um, you know, sometimes we over reward him for nothing. <laughs> when we when we over when we over reward him, he doesn't give us any value back. He sort of he, he, kicks, he kicks us in the in the butt, if you know. <laughs> I, I, I'll admit this little guy is is absolutely spoiled rotten. Yeah. Let me ask you how how do you track hours for your VA? Well, if we we, we don't we particularly we don't, don't have one. The, but if we did, we would have a, a, a spreadsheet of sorts uh, somehow sort of to monitor that of what they did. And we would we would actually give them a sheet and each day we would get them to fill in, you know, like some kind of tracking, yeah. you know, an Excel, an Excel sheet of, of hours yeah. so that we could. Probably like if you work for an accountant or something, how well they basically have to account for every 10 minute section on a sheet. Um, yeah. that type of, you know, something, but, you know, probably not to that degree. But every task would be different. I mean, if you're asking them to write copy, it's going to be different if you're there doing refund letters or, you know, um, customer thank yous or whatever they're doing. So every task, I think, in Amazon would be slightly different in that respect. It's not something well, that you can yeah. just say this is a rule because, you know, and then do you compensate them on sales or not? I'm not too sure about that because, you know, it's really got to be a net profit. I mean, you can... You know, give someone a big bonus on sales, but you, they've been running your PPC lousy, and you've lost money. Um, you know, <laughs> so you know you've got to be very careful. I think in this business to look at the well. To me, the only thing I care about in my business is P R O F I T. Nothing else. I don't. I don't care how much I turn over. 
It's not like I can turn over half of it as long as I'm making profit is my main yeah. thing, um, which I think a lot of people don't take into account in the Amazon game. They think their sales are great. And you see all these posts, my sales last month were, and I just go, yeah, but show me your profit. How much have you spent on advertising to get that sale? I mean, is it? Is it viable still? So I think, you know, you've got to be careful when you're paying out a bonus to a VA that you're looking at the net profit of your business, not all the other bits you're adding in, but your true business profit, Absolutely. which is very hard and to get that, people. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you VA, do? Yeah. That Sorry. VA becomes part of the expenses. So yes. you've got to make sure that that profit is larger at the end with those expenses included than yeah. it would have been if you didn't have those expenses. Yeah. I'm sorry, Kevin, I spoke over you. No, 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 no sorry, I spoke over you. I was going to say, well, how do you go about with, with your, uh, in Megla, how do you, with, yeah. with your VI? I was just saying that I don't count hours, but I give specific tasks and I say, okay, this is what I want you to do. And I, I know how much time it would take to do those tasks. And, uh, you know, I just have expectations and yeah, this is what yeah. she needs to do and she can spend two hours doing it or five hours. And, of course, she will become more efficient as she does it more often. And, um, yeah, but, but I, I don't like to really ask her to, you know, like um, specify how many hours she's worked and how many minutes and keep yeah. track of all of that. But, 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 you're, but you're an expert in, in the, the, <laughs> those things that you've done for many years, so you know exactly how long it would take you. Yeah. And so yeah. it's, 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 it's like um, if I can do something expertly, I wouldn't expect someone else to do it the same time as me, but I would give, have an expectation so, and, you, you know, reward them like that. Sorry, Stephen. So, Kevin, I've got a um, – you, you had mentioned earlier apprenticing and so on. Years ago, but now we're, we're going back um, 40 years, uh, I used to be a fashion photographer. So I had right. long hair and I was cool and, and all the rest of that. I've seen some of those photos on Facebook. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, I, um, yeah, my, I, I did some stuff with my friend Kip uh, Winger. He ended up getting a gold and a platinum album. And the photos I took became iconic, long hair band stuff. But anyway, uh, I was started off as an assistant because it's very much, particularly back then, was an apprenticeship type program. Yes. And yes. sweeping the floors of the studio and so on. And I worked my way up to producing my first Photoshop, a uh, first photo shoot, which yeah. was for, I think it was, um, it was a women's magazine. And uh, I had to produce the whole thing. And it took me about a day and a half for a, a full, large photo shoot going on uh, in Central Park. And about, oh gosh, five, six months later, still working for the guy, doing a lot of production, and it was after hours, we we're having some drinks. And I was saying, you know, remember that very first shoot I did? And it took me about a day and a half. I said, now I do that. That's done in a half an hour. Why did you let me take a day and a half to do that? And he was really serious. He says, how else were you going to learn? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So sometimes you want to give them. And you don't give them a day and a half unless no. you, know, you really believe that they have that potential. Yeah. But... When they're first starting out, do you give them a little bit more time? Yeah. Let yeah. them learn because they may surprise you or they might suck, in which case, find another VA. But <laughs> if you people give them a people chance, learn by mistakes anyway, Stephen, don't we? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a human, you know, it's a human uh, thing that we all learn by our mistakes. And, you know, you have to make mistakes to get better. And if someone's, <laughs> you know, rectifying your mistakes or, or pointing out your mistakes, then that's how you get better and better. And it's, it's, it's no different than having a coach. I mean, you know, Coach Margaret sort of looks after me every day, so I don't go sort of making <laughs> <comments. laughs> Coach Margaret is, is letting you play too much golf. <laughs> Thank you, Megla. <laughs> I, think, I think your bonus, you just lost your bonus. <laughs> oh, no. Let me ask you, are you learning the golf? Because you can take extra hours if you're still learning. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god here we go Steven, it's, a, now. It's, a, it's a game i've played for over over 25 years and i, I don't know if i've got any better or i'm probably getting worse <laughs> that so let's take this question more time from... on the course i think so yeah yeah that's my okay. excuse yeah. 
Yeah, so Manu is asking, is it a myth that the VAs demand you to pay for their high-speed unlimited internet and sometimes for the fast working laptop too? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, they may ask. What? Yeah. But will you give? <laughs> I'm not going to say yes. <laughs> but I know who he's getting. Yeah, I think if they're... Has someone, Manu, exactly. has someone asked you that? Manu, I don't think you should provide that because if they are a VA, if they are developing this as a skill and marketing themselves as a VA, then this is an investment that they need to do in, in their business, right? <laughs> yeah, not you, yeah. not you don't have to invest for them. Yeah. No. No. I, I think the <laughs> reality is, do they need a faster laptop if they're working on Canva? Not really. If they're working on Premiere, yes. Do they yeah. need high-speed internet? Not really. I mean, unless they're they're doing something that requires that. And frankly, a <laughs> frankly, a lot of um, uh, VAs are working in places where they don't have high-speed internet. And you're not as long as they're able to provide you the skills that that they say that they have and the deliverables that you need from them. I, I don't feel bad about working with someone who's got a very slow into it. I go back to the days of listening to that strange whistle and putting a phone into a cradle and then typing everything out on yellow punch tapes and punch cards. So you don't <laughs> need I'm on stage and you're you right now. <laughs> and, hey, let me tell you something. I'm 23 years old. And I would look a lot younger if I had used VAs earlier. <laughs> that looks like something that you saw in the FBA memes group, Stephen. <laughs> Shout out Wait. to Marie. Yeah. Hello, Marie. Great job out there. Yeah. Yes, Marie is doing such a great job. Yeah. Margaret, do you remember DOS on the computer? DOS and then, you know, go yes. from DOS to Windows. <laughs> do you, do you, do you yes. know what DOS stood for? Yeah, well, we Disc, had a, a disk operating system. Close, yeah, dirty yeah. operating system. Yeah. That's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. long time ago. So, Madam Margaret British. is sounding more British today. <laughs> Whoa. That's Maybe because I'm whiter than the others. <laughs> I've been with an Englishman for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pam, is my audio okay now? Because my VA sent me a message during the live as well saying that I was a bit uh, softer. So, maybe my mic wasn't working. Stephen, okay, I've just awesome. Got one more. Can I just ask one yeah. question, Stephen? What do you access to your Amazon account? Do you feel a VA should have limited access, no access? What would What do you do in that case? Do you let them actually log in, or do you do the changes yourself later? How do you work? I think that depends totally on the trust that you have, and that trust has to be earned. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that's not just your Amazon account. You could have them looking at your emails. You can have them do all sorts of things. And by the way, we're talking Amazon, but you could be having your, your VA, a virtual assistant is there as your assistant. So it's not just Amazon. It could be anything. If you're doing a lot of traveling, a good VA might be able to make hotel reservations for you, arrange airline uh, tickets. You might even have a VA, if you trust them, take care of monthly bills all of those are certainly a level of trust and more than just amazon but you have to get to that point where you can trust them just don't have someone say to you i'm your va now give me all of your access and all of your passwords don't go with that <laughs> and, and it happens it happens see the problem is that um we have a tendency to look with our own goggles and those are experience goggles. And every now and then we have to take those goggles off and remind ourselves that new people, thousands of new people, are getting involved in this every single day. Mm. They don't know. And it's very easy for, um, for a VA to, to come into a Facebook group and start saying, oh, you don't know how to do Amazon? The first thing you need to do is hire a VA who will teach you how to do everything. Yeah. Well. No, but they don't know. I have a, um, as part of my, my group and my course, um, I do a free 20 minute consultation, which as you can tell, I can barely shut up now. So you know that the 20 minutes <laughs> last long. <laughs> but I am, I am amazed at the number of people who contact me. And I wanted to do it because I want to introduce people into 
what I do, which is uh, like a parallel course to Amazon. It's like you can also look at getting it in-store retailers. Uh, I've discovered the reality is that about half the people who contact me are contacting me because they are brand new. And the things yeah. that I'm hearing is that I hear so many different types of things. I'm confused. I don't know what direction to go in. Is this correct? Is that correct? I was told this by someone in a group. And it's, it's, it's hard for us sometimes to put ourselves back into their shoes. So yes, um, some, so I, I'd love to pass this around to everyone, but what are some basic things you should be aware of with a VA? Number one, my thoughts is a VA is there to help you, not teach you. Don't give all of your personal information and passwords to a VA. If you have questions, ask friends. Don't think that just because a VA says something, it's golden, it could be incorrect. Mm -hmm. And feel free to always double check those things. When you have an, uh, an eight to five job and you're a single mom and, and you've got you know, two kids and you come home and you take care of them and you finally get them to bed and then you can get onto your computer and start working on Amazon or whatever else it is. If you could have someone help you out, that can change your life. Mm -hmm. You just want to make sure it's the right person. Yep. Um, so vet them carefully. So there, yeah. there's three or four on my list. What, what other things should a new brand new person be thinking about when they're thinking about how do they get help on their business? Yeah, let's go around the screen here. Margaret, go. Well, yeah, I think, well, I suppose I'm probably a little bit better to, I like to do everything myself first. So I wouldn't really probably employ anyone for the first run of my product. I would like to learn the whole thing. And um, then once I'm confident and I know what should be happening, I might look at the things that I probably dislike the most or take up most of my time, depending on your, you know, like, as you said, if you're a single mum with two kids and you've got to start this at 10 o'clock and you've got to one o'clock every morning before you get up again at five, um, you know, you've got to obviously look at doing something. And I think you've got to be selective as to time constraints and what you're better at, what your strengths are, get rid of the things that you're not as good at or you don't like. PPC, I can't stand. That's my biggest hate in Amazon. Anything else I love, <laughs> um, I admit it. Um, so to me, that would be the one thing that I don't really enjoy doing as much as everything else. So to me, I love writing copy. I would never outsource that because I love drawing it. Um, you know, I love finding the keywords. So I think you've just got to go to your own strengths and, and look at what you're best at. And, and do it that way than sort of just go, oh, yeah, I'm going to outsource all this because well, I don't think anyone knew you can afford to outsource it all anyway because unless you've found that winning product through your lack of knowledge from that course you paid a fortune for that didn't work, um, <laughs> you know, like it's really difficult to um, get to, um, to finding a product and getting it live and making enough money to pay for someone to be full-time running your business. I was, I was talking to someone tonight Brand new, brand new, just thinking about starting on Amazon. But she has got the mind of uh, Bill Gates. She, <laughs> she went through, she found a product that has high demand, low competition, sells for just under 500 and wow. costs 35. Wow. Wow. <laughs> she doesn't was... need a VA. No, <laughs> Stephen, we need to invest in that girl. Yeah. She's your next VA. Uh, I'm going to be working for her one day. Kevin, any yeah, final it, thoughts from you? Yeah, well, look, I, I, see, I see all the time through the different, uh, you know, um, Facebook groups, a lot of people get easily confused because there's a lot of noise, um, you know, out there. And, and, and I, I would sort of say to people, you know, like Stephen sort of just mentioned, um, look, you, you've just got to sort of go up down one track that sort of works, but you start diverting from the tracks and listening to some of the noise, you can get totally bamboozled in, in this Amazon um, world. Because you go down one road and someone says, hey, stop, you can't. That's the wrong turn. And you go back and someone else, no, you get the wrong turn again. And suddenly you're swirling around and 
uh, I know when uh, myself and Mark go a few years ago, we started looking at um, online stuff and we listened to some wrong people and it caused us a few mistakes to begin with, didn't it, Mark? Yeah, you do. I think you, you well, you learn by your mistakes and um, yeah. yeah, you sort of, you've yeah. got to sort out what I think is, is right from wrong, but it's very hard when you know nothing about e-commerce and selling on e-commerce. Like, I mean, we'd had businesses all our lives, but we'd never been down this path, um, you know, mm before we started on this journey but you know it's 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 not easy and i think a lot of people are get sold that dream you know you can take a thousand dollars do my course for you know five thousand dollars and in two months give up your day job and you're going to be making enough income and right right and i think that's the problem there's too much people listen to that and think that hey you know i've got people now who are saying to me oh in six months i'm not going to be working and i'm going good luck with that <laughs> you know because it's you know it's not fair and, and, right. yeah, yeah. and as far as the VA, uh, my last word on a, on a VA is I just treat it like I would employing, you know, a, a, a employees over the years, you know, and, and the same, I'd, I'd use the same sort of scope, you know, to scope out a, a sort of, a, you know, what the job is and, and sort of, you know, and, and I would treat them exactly the same, whether they're from the Philippines, from Pakistan, from India, from Bangladesh, it doesn't matter. A, a, an employee is an employee. Except and, for the uh, one from Australia, then you got to take all the cuss words out. Yeah, but you got to. <laughs> <laughs> and you have, and you have to, you have to, did he get too many holidays, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I totally agree with all of you, and I think what we should remember is that they are called virtual assistants, right? They are assistants. Yes. So they're there to assist you in your business. Mm. So don't go to them for strategy and other advice for your business. Also, I want to appeal to all VAs out there. Please do not post wrong advice in Facebook groups and don't <laughs> mislead people with all of this, you know, all, all of this sort of information and, and say things like you need X amount to invest in order to, you know, run a profitable business or to launch a new product. Don't give wrong advice. And all of you new sellers out there who are just starting out, go to a proper course, you know, talk to Steven or look at Helium 10. They've got a Freedom Ticket, which is a free course. Do a course so that you get all of your basics right. Don't get your information from Facebook groups. You come to Facebook groups when you get stuck or when you don't, uh, when you need help on certain issues and you want to ask other sellers, but don't come to Facebook groups and don't seek advice on how to start an Amazon business. I don't think that's the right way to go, um, to go about it. Great advice there, Megla. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. awesome. So I think that was a great discussion on VAs. And Stephen, I wanted to quickly talk about the workshop that you're doing yes. at the upcoming Global Sources Summit. So for um, any of you who are not aware, I mean, I, I organized Global Sources Summit and I've been doing it um, since 2016 in Hong Kong. But this time it's been... She started when she was 12. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> and so, of course, we're doing it virtually. And Stephen was a speaker at the previous uh, summit in Hong Kong, and we had so much fun. We were just looking at photos today. In fact, it's been exactly a year since the last one was held. So we're doing it online, and the dates are November 10th, 11th, and 12th. And so 10th and 11th are presentations and um, uh, workshops, masterclasses. But Stephen is doing a six hour workshop on how to source from China. It's called China Sourcing Workshop and it's on uh, November 12th in the US, November 13th in Asia and um, Australia. So check it out over here, globalsource.com forward slash summit. The entire summit is going to be held live. There are no pre-recorded sessions. There are no on-demand videos. It's totally, completely live. And uh, it's going to be very engaging and interactive. But Stephen, I wanted to give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about this uh, workshop that you are planning. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, it is going to be a lot of fun. Um, and the number one goal uh, is to learn. But the number one, number two goal is to make sure that it is engaging. It is interactive. So, uh, for example, uh, we were Kevin was talking about negotiation earlier. We're going to be talking about negotiating with Chinese suppliers and we're figuring it out so we can actually do interactive role plays as part of the, the virtual summit and so on. We're also going to be looking at things that even if you're experienced, you may not have heard of or you may not be familiar with before. 
such as how to choose your shipping so that your supplier's address and name is hidden from anyone who does public record search. Um, if you, the Chinese government uh, supplies all sorts of sourcing opportunities for you to find what factories people are doing, are using off of their public shipping records. And um, Jungle Scout does something similar and there are other things online that you can do. Well, wouldn't it be nice to know how to do your shipping so that that never shows up? Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna be looking at things that veteran people may not have heard of before. We're gonna be look. it's perfect if you're just starting out. And in fact, if you're just starting out before you hire a VA, come join. <laughs> and if you are a VA, come join and learn. Uh, <laughs> as well as that for, for veteran people. Fantastic. Sounds fantastic, yeah. David. Yeah. And one of the things, of course, you talked about negotiating, but uh, one of the points that you had in your notes was also negotiating as a woman, <laughs> which yeah, I thought was very interesting. <laughs> Nobody oh, really talked yeah. about those little things. <laughs> really? China is a fascinating culture. I absolutely love it. And I'll give you a little bit about this is that it's also a great sociological experiment for those people who are as old as, as I am, the rest of you three can catch up in 10, 20 years. You remember that in the 80s, China began a one child per family rule. That means that instead of lots of families, that child was female. China also has a couple of other rules. At 55, women retire. At 62, men retire. So we are now at that point where a lot of owners of factories, um, suppliers, real estate companies, uh, large corporations are retiring. And their, uh, their heir is a female, is a woman. So you've got women stepping up to leadership roles in important positions. And it takes a, 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 a culture that is traditionally treating men here and women here and creating a whole new system of a third type of of person a woman who is in charge of a business and because they are seeing that now in china it impacts what you as a woman can do when you walk in owning your own business and we'll be talking about that as well awesome. fantastic yeah in, in india good. in india Stephen, there's uh, we deal with a lot of um, women uh, ceos um we've we've inter interviewed many uh, Margaret uh, Megla uh, for for Viz, uh, and we find that the, that the daughter, you know, the daughter has gone away to uh, England or America, been educated, and then come back with the MBA or whatever, and, and you know, sort of help dad and mum and dad in the factory, and then take over. So we're oh, seeing yeah. that a lot. Yeah. We're seeing that a lot now, Megla, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. And we've also seen a lot of service providers, I think, uh, you know, like Samiksha from Sea Yeah, yeah. Um, there's Gunjan, who's a sourcing agent. Yeah. Um, Komod is a sourcing agent as well. So, yeah, a lot of different roles. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally agree. But so, you better come over to India, Stephen. There's more women in your life. <laughs> <laughs> my, my mom was a, um, not only was she a, a strong feminist in in talk, but you know, she was a strong feminist in, in, in action as well. And uh, when when I got to the point where I started having my my own businesses, she used to tell me that the best secret weapon is a smart woman, because you put a smart woman on your staff, everyone's going to start to underestimate her. And uh, uh, I have, to my advantage, recognized that, and uh, um, uh, always, you know, recognize. People will, will underestimate a woman and she can sit there in that room and come back. I've had, oh my goodness. In China, I had a, a woman who could come back later and basically she could do a, a, a business dossier on everyone that was sitting at that table, um, <laughs> telling you all about them, what they're, I mean, it's like you'd never want to play poker with her because she could do <laughs> So my mom was was really good with that advice and absolutely i am so looking forward to to coming with uh coming with you guys to india that's going to be excellent really well we need some we need some uh, tips from you Stephen, on how to run a, a sourcing workshop so after you've done <laughs> six hours we, we'll be able to pick some really good tips off from you so when we here's the when first we... tip here's the first tip 
November 12th. Come join the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> we will. Of course we will. Yeah, it's going to get three we'll, days off yet. <laughs> and, we'll and be, we'll take, be watching. <laughs> take the whole day off, come to the workshop, and give all your responsibilities to a VA. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. So guys, check out the workshop, check out the summit, globalsource.com forward slash summit. That's the URL. Also, we want to remind everyone that we have this coming up later this week. It yeah. is yay <laughs> Friday and Saturday. And this month's VIS is sponsored by Avast. We're so excited to have them as a partner. Yeah. And we're also going to be doing a Diwali special. And come on, Kevin, what are you wearing for Diwali? <laughs> it's a secret. It's a it's secret. A secret. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Looking now, forward to now that. Now people have something to tune in for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Margaret is going to be wearing a sari. <laughs> I'm still googling how to do it. I've got to do another practice run tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'll YouTube do videos. Safety pins in it. <laughs> so, since I have not been to to, uh, to India yet, Kevin, will you explain to me what that is called? The the, the long pants that can be lifted up and come down and happy pants. <laughs> <laughs> Megler, what's it really called? <laughs> the, the, I've actually tried some of them on. Yeah. Oh, I think you're referring to dhoti or pajamas. Like there are different, you know, versions of it. There's one that's a bit tight. That's a pajama. There's one that's loose. Um, so that's a dhoti. There's one that's more like a skirt. That's lungi. <laughs> lungi. <laughs> lungi. So, lungi. Now we know yeah. what to expect you in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Kevin would probably be wearing a kurta, which is the shirt yeah. that has an Indian type of collar and um, yeah. yeah. It's gorgeous. Okay. Yeah. It's it's very colourful anyway. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, that's that's that is what I'm looking forward to most. The skirt for men. <laughs> <laughs> Not the skirt for men. No. Thank you very much. The timing you, on that's perfect. If you Google, um, I think it's Punjabi sort of fashion. And you, you see all the difference and some fantastic fashions. Uh, they, they look good on all the young, on the, on the young blokes. You know, they look sort of pretty good. And I think um, a lot of the uh, the dress is, you know, if you for the, the weddings, you see a lot of the weddings. Oh, they, gosh. they get wow, they they, they get dressed up. Uh, my, my, fantastic for <laughs> the local weddings. My friends have photos of their weddings up on the wall. Yeah, and, I mean, it's just like you just walk in and it's like, I want to be in that world. That is yeah. oh, Indian wedding. Maybe what we should do is we should arrange that while we're there to like just walk in on somebody's wedding and just kind of <laughs> celebrate. Gate crash wedding. Yes, crash oh. wedding. The dance, the colors, the people, the happiness, the love. Yeah. I want to yeah. see that. You haven't watched well, that video then of Tim Jordan in his outfit with Michael Sims. You have to send that link. Wait, wait, Tim and Michael at a wedding dancing and in love? No, they weren't <laughs> in a wedding. A wedding. They, were our, they were at our function. We had a, a actual cultural night and we were all dressed up in our gear. It was great. Oh, but that is wonderful. We'll send you, we'll get Megla to send you the link. You'll have to watch it. <laughs> yes. But Megla, some, some, some of those weddings go for like two days or something, don't they? No, weeks, Kevin. Weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do it all the time. Free for the Weeks. Wedding crashes. I'm going to get married. I, we should get married in, in India when we go, man. I just met you. Oh, I thought you were asking me to get married. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, if if that outfit looks good on some on, on some guy who's twenty years old, it's going to look three times as good on me. <laughs> so when you come with us to India, Stephen, first we're going to take you shopping and get you all your Indian lungis yeah. and pajamas and everything, <laughs> and then we're going to take you to Bollywood night so you can dance. <laughs> there, oh, Bollywood, absolutely, absolutely, it's better than going to China. I went and got a shirt. This woman said, "Yeah, yeah, we got the big belly size for you." I said, "Thank you very much." <laughs> Actually, I'm looking forward to going back to one little cellar of belts on the bottom of building B in China at the Canton Fair because she sold me a belt that I've now taken about this much off of the belt since she sold it to me. 
So I'm going back just very, very just to show her. Yeah. tough. And I want to show her that I've lost weight because oh, she was on there. She said, you're, you're very big. <laughs> I used to be fat like her. And she points to her coworker. <laughs> Yeah. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember in Thailand sometime? I, I was going to buy a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. And I um, was trying to find a t-shirt to, to fit me. And each shop you go to, oh no, you too big, you too big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want a t-shirt? <laughs> so guys, one, definitely one, join one us. Big shirts that hang down low. That's that's okay. right. <laughs> You can't get a word in, Megla. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, guys, join us uh, this Friday. Now, we've changed the time a little bit. So, it's good for UK, in fact. So, all of our friends in the UK, you will be able to join us. It's at 9 a.m. UK time. So, guys in the U US, it'll be a bit late for you. <laughs> but you can probably catch the end of the show because we go for about three hours. So, um, yeah, we're, we're starting at around 5 a.m. Eastern time in the US. So Stephen, it'll be pretty late for you. It is. Uh, I, I, look, I have 2 here. I have Australia, Seattle, and London as three clocks on the wall over here. So I can see what time it is. But that same weekend, well, this is 30th and 31st. So we yeah. change our clocks right after that. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. straight up to Halloween. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Awesome. But this, this time, we're looking after the Brits because we, we haven't looked after the Brits. The Brits <laughs> have always been the wrong time, Megler, haven't they? Yes, absolutely. So yeah. we're hopeful that they will join us live this time. Yes, that's for sure. Cool. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Stephen. That was wonderful. We had so much fun <laughs> on the show. That was excellent. And <laughs> lovely to meet you, Stephen. Absolutely. Same here. here. Yeah. Well, when it's it's the season, season, we've been sending text back and forth for a couple of years yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I mean, lovely to meet and sit and talk with you. That's what I meant. Absolutely. First of many times. First of many Absolutely. Times. No problem yeah. at all. No worries. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, David. Talk Thank to you, David. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Right, Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.